coming back to do the miniseries, got off the plane and went, oh, great, I'm home. Fantastic. The only difference was I didn't have a key for a door that was uh, a house of my own, so I go out and look for a place to live. But, you know, you move back into the neighborhood that you lived in while you were here, and it's a good place to live. It's a great place to live, and it's been a fantastic place to work. Things happen on the show at such a breakneck pace as far as production goes. Scripts are coming and going <laughs> and coming and going all the time. So that if you don't allow the individual departments, the individuals within those departments to play creatively, you won't get the show done. Uh, by necessity, things are handed off and you go, OK, this is the pyro guy's chance to play. You walk in and go, there's going to be explosions, but you can't dictate to the pyro guys what the explosions are. So you walk in and they've lined up this incredible set of explosions for you to wander through and you're going is this what the script asked for well i don't know but it looks pretty cool and and you go with it and you incorporate it and the same is true with performance there's a great advantage in a naive approach to storytelling because you could go what if what if what if what if so my suggestions come out of a naive approach which is well what if we do this and what if we do this and hopefully there's someone there to go <laughs> No, dumb idea, slap. No, dumb idea, slap. And then occasionally they'll go, well, nobody else has got an idea, we'll, we'll take that idea. Because I believe that, that uh, if somebody wants to do something, then they will surpass what you perceive their abilities to be. You know, um, I don't think that's an invalid statement to say you write to people's abilities. But, it, you know, you have that moment where you go, this is something they want to do. And if someone wants to do something, then you're much more likely to get good work or interesting work. In most drama, we tend to do modern drama and we want to present a role model. Our lead characters, our protagonists, should be role models, something that someone can look up to. Uh, John Crichton fell off that cart years ago. His body count is astronomical. His only redeeming feature is that he really feels bad about it. But he's killed thousands of people. He's a mass murderer. You know, am I happy about this? No, Ben Browder's not happy about the fact that, okay, he's gonna kill some more people again. But in the course of the drama and in the course of the epic scale of the story that we're telling, as you know, you're talking about a, a brewing war and conflict which is raging at the other end of the galaxy, uh, John Crichton gets his hands dirty. And he gets his hands dirty for sometimes noble causes and sometimes selfish causes. There's a lot of gray area in that character. And that makes it interesting to watch. It makes it interesting to play. As far as John Crichton and me acting John Crichton, I am so heavily dependent upon everyone around me. I'm dependent upon Claudia Black, and I'm dependent upon Anthony Simcoe, and I'm dependent upon the directors and the editors, and my makeup artist, Nugget. <laughs> you know, I'm dependent upon all of the people around me to make Crichton work. And then you're dependent upon the good graces of the audience to accept the Crichton that you're giving them. Coming back to Duke Farscape is like a family reunion, and it's amazing that we've managed to gather everybody back together to do it. It's amazing that it was put together, and it was amazing that the fans hung together to push us back into this situation, and I am extremely grateful to everybody who made it possible, because I'm still having fun.